All right, so I'm getting ready to install this piece, which I showed you earlier, as the cigarette lighter plug adapter, 12 volt or 13 point or whatever the voltage I put into it. It has a double USB. Both of them are 5 volt. One is uh, 1 amp and the other is 2.1 amp. And then there's a little voltmeter, a DC voltmeter to let me know what the voltage is at, the, at this point because this will be hooked up to a variable power supply so that's where that's going to go now the plastic isn't all that great so I was going to use some ABS plastic but then I figured you know what it's only going to bend every time I go to push something in there so I cut a piece of uh, yeah uh, OSB board drilled some holes in it put some primer on it so now at that point I can put that plastic ABS over that because it has a support put that on there and I can bolt it up over there someplace so that's where we're at so far with that now over here uh, we haven't got a signal yet on the GPS here so let me kind of prop this up to see what's going on here uh, the snow may hinder us especially with being inside as well but a radio this is the marine radio um, this has a, a few little features on it, which is nice. The distress, I'll never use in here. Um, but it gives me uh, different features that I can, I can do a call, so I can have it hooked up to a, a horn, a fog horn or PA. Um, actually, it's a nice little radio for the money. Uh, where else are we? We have a few other menus here someplace, if I can figure out where they are. Seeing that I haven't used this radio in a while. There we go, we got radio. We have track. We have compass. We have digital readout, so it tells us all the digital facts that we need to know. And we have setup and self-test. So at that point, I can set this up to just about anything I want to do with it. Um, including longitude and latitude uh, of where I'm at but like I say it, were, it was made for a boat however uh, sometimes with the uh, with the Coast Guard and things um, you know we still communicate so I keep that here for that reason now that's not the one we use there's another set of frequencies on another uh, government set of frequencies uh, that once a week there's a roll call on but other than that that's so much for that so I'm just waiting for this to find itself a home because uh, like I say it, it's looking I'd, yeah go ahead drop things why don't I well as long as you want to go down there I'll leave you there um, so we'll leave this here for now let it do what it's got to do um, I'll probably shut the radio off the radio doesn't have to be on in order for this to work. Oh, here comes a signal. Oh, sure. Just as I start to move it, we started getting a signal from the satellites. There, we got one signal so far. Okay, so that's a good spot. I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, let me turn the radio off. We don't need the radio on. Okay. Um, and I'm going to finish all this up tomorrow. Because uh, tomorrow is going to be another one of those days. I'll let the GPS find its home. Uh, that will be dry tomorrow, so I can finish this and get the epoxy and all that done. So that'll be done tomorrow. Uh, what else? Oh, you know what I gotta do today? I gotta do it before I forget. I gotta sand these down. All right. Those are just some uh, sheetrock screws holding a piece of two by four up underneath. I put epoxy on it as well um, because like I say when I clamp things to this because it was hollow underneath it was hard to do any clamping so by putting a 2x4 under there it helps me when I want to clamp things down so, uh, so that works out quite well so but I can't have these sticking up like that and the tin this is a tin top or a metal top this wasn't quite thick enough to me for me to counter stick these in enough so that they didn't stick up unfortunately so 
So I'm going to get the, uh, the grinder and cut those down. I'm going to do that now before I go in. I still have about uh, 20 minutes, so let me get that done. And, uh, and that'll probably be it for today. Time to go in and relax after that. Uh, there's no sense in me striking up any more heat in the fire. Because um, like I said, that's probably going to burn until about 8 o'clock tonight. I'll just set the timer. Let me set it now. Yeah, set it for another four hours. So that'll shut off. So let me take care of this. I'll be right back, guys. All right, so those were all sanded down, or grinded down. Can't even feel them now. So that's good. So, so that's about it for today. Like I said, I just wanted to get that done. It took me all of about three or four minutes. And uh, the snow is getting a little finer, which means it may last a little longer. But we'll see what happens. I'll take it one step at a time. Like I say, no big deal. A little snow doesn't hurt. We need it for the water system. If we don't have snow, well, we have a water problem this summer. So uh, we need the snow. And you know what? Compared to the last two years, this is nothing. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, you guys got it just like we did two years. Uh, Jesus, we were getting like two feet at a time both last year and the year prior. So uh, I mean, it was uh, it was snowing. Now that doesn't mean we're not going to get more throughout the course of the season because we still have another month, month and a half. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, now I, I'm thinking about it here. We used to uh, take our boat out of the water. We lived on our boat, like I said, for four years, all winter, summer, winter, in this kind of weather, you know. But uh, again, when you're on the boat, you know, it's got heat. So we have everything just like home, you know, internet, uh, cable TV, satellite TV telephone uh yeah heat right? we got everything so it didn't really make a difference where you're sitting or where you're if you're in a boat or in a house um, but what we would do is we would take the boat out of the water for a week the middle of march we would clean the bottom you know uh paint the bottom do all the work that we may have to do on it because if it's in the water Naturally, you got to put uh, an anti-following paint on the bottom. I used to use an, abra um, an ablative, which means it would rinse off, you know, through the course of the season. So you just don't keep putting more paint on and on and on. And the next thing you know, you got 800 pounds of paint on the bottom of your boat. Um, but at that point, uh, we would take it out. We'd let it out. We'd keep it out for about a week. We let it sit. Uh, the day before we put it in, we paint the bottom. You know, uh, we scrape it and let it sit and dry for a few days, and and like I say, uh, you know, go through the whole thing and uh, paint the bottom. Then the following day, I go back in. But we used to do that, you know, like the between the end of the second week or the beginning of the third week of uh, March, and then put it back in and put it in our slip and uh, move back in again. Now, for that week that it was out of the water, uh, we would either stay over at my sister-in-law's house for the week, or we would just take in a hotel for a week. It doesn't make a difference. I mean, you know, we didn't have the boys back then. Uh, it was just the two of us. You know, we really didn't care. You know, there's nothing wrong with uh, staying in a hotel. You know, I mean, you, know, you stay in a hotel, you got a living room, you got a dining room, you know, a kitchen, you know, I mean... We've always ended up with like a two room with a dining area, so we've always ended up with a nice uh, little, uh, you know, hotel. It's like a small condo for crying out loud. So, um, you know, I mean, it's not a big deal. You know, you move in for a week, cost you a couple hundred bucks. I always to tell them, leave the vacuum and everything outside the door. We'll take care of cleaning our own area. This way I didn't have to worry about them coming in because sometimes we'd be there you know all day sometimes we wouldn't be it all depends uh, and uh, it worked out well so now do I miss the boat mm, yes I miss the boat as far as taking our, our travels our, our traveling of the boat 
uh, going different places, being on the water. Uh, I mean, it's just a great feeling, you know, to be out there on the water. Um, but as far as the maintenance, the mortgage, uh, and, and all that went along with it, I don't miss that anymore. So, I mean, I, I'm just going to say this to give you guys an idea what it used to cost us, but I'm not saying it for any other reason, because when I said I missed the mortgage, I don't miss the mortgage. It, you know, thank God I don't have it anymore. But that boat was costing us in the neighborhood of, oh, well, I can very easily say $5,000 a month. You know, easily. Between the mortgage, the slip, the maintenance, you know, just a little upkeep, uh, the winter storage. I mean, even though we lived on it, you know, we still had to keep it in the water. So we still had to pay the winter slip fee or winter storage. Uh, we had to pay electricity, so I mean, you know, very easily five grand a month. So, you know, I I, I don't miss not paying that. That there, uh, you know, is uh, um, and the gas. I mean, that was that was totally separate from that. When we finally took our boat out of the water, the last time I filled it up, it cost me fifteen hundred dollars to fill my tanks. Now, my tanks would last me if I was to just get in the boat and go and travel we'll say between 20 and 22 knots going with the tide I would probably see about eight hours and then I have to fill it again another fifteen hundred dollars so it was you know with us it was costing us on an average uh, because we used to use our boat now we didn't use it all day I mean we would go to a marina that may take us two to three hours to get there if we went to Boston or something that would take us four hours and then four hours back so that would be a tank of gas but we'd have to fill it again so that trip would cost us almost three thousand dollars in fuel not counting the dockage when we're in Boston at four dollars a foot you know and then you got to pay for your electric hookup and we had two electrical services on the boat you know and stuff like that so but you know what if you think about it if you were to go on vacation or take a cruise like Val for instance um, you know, which are nice but you take the cruise a week or two it's done and you drop 10 grand right? all summer was a vacation for us because you know fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars for a, for a week you know I mean that's not too bad I can I can take off quite a bit you know so if you look at it that way it's not a whole lot of money so but I do miss the boat I miss the being on the water you know I miss the navigating I, I miss you know checking believe it or not checking the storms when we're traveling and you see the rain clouds coming in on the radar and and, and things and you know uh, it, it's just it's a challenge you know and I and I miss that but as far as what it costs to run it I don't miss that at all so but anyway I don't know how I got on that subject guys I'm sorry didn't mean to bore you with it um, and I'm getting ready to go in the house